Every Single Week, Lady Ada. Just a great search. Brought to you by DigiKey. Thank you, DigiKey. And Lady Ada uses her engineering skills for good and shows you how to find things on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what is this week's great search? Okay, so this week's great search, I just talked about how I'm working on keyboard design. So let's go to the overhead real fast because we're going to split this off. So it's good for me to show this. So this is a keyboard PCB, people who make uh, mechanical keyboards. Each key has an RGB LED underneath it, which looks like that. And the RGB LEDs here are analog RGB LEDs. They're not digital, they're not smart, you know, NeoPixels, dot stars. These are plain, you know, one anode or one cathode and then RGB, that's four pans total. And they're driven by this chip here, which is uh, the ISS, ISSI IS31FL3741 which is a 351, 39 by nine um, LED matrix scanner driver, PWM driver, so that this, this will be able to control each of these LEDs and you can have up to 112 or so LEDs, um, analog LEDs controlled um, by this matrix driver. So you're probably wondering, and here's, here's the dev board that I've got uh, for this chip, the IS31FL, IS31FL3741, uh, that chip again here, this is a STM, sorry, this chip over here, this is a little STM helper driver. So um, this chip, you know, is designed to drive a large LED, large, you know, 120 uh, LEDs um, with full 8-bit PWM per channel. Okay, so folks who know Adafruit are probably like, why use analog LEDs? when you can just get NeoPixels, you don't need a driver chip, you don't need to route all the lines, you don't need all the, you just send data over one pin and you're done. Um, well, let's go to the computer and let's do some math. So the reason why we might want to use, uh, and here, here it's just showing you the, the matrix driver and how it works. Why would you use a chip that costs $2 and then analog LEDs instead of just NeoPixel LEDs altogether. And there's nothing wrong with using NeoPixels. Go for it. They're totally cool. However, NeoPixels cost, you know, about 10 cents a piece. And if you do the math, let's say you have, you know, 100 keys on your keyboard and you're doing um, them with NeoPixels. So times 10 cents a piece, that's like the best price. If you're getting, you know, wheels and wheels of them, you're going to get as low as 10 cents. Um, you're going to spend $10 just on the LEDs, which isn't bad, right? If you have a very nice keyboard, you want one LED per key. However, once you get to these large quantities, um, the price of analog LEDs, you, you know, you might be able to make it up, but even though you have an external driver. So if you have um, 100 LEDs and your analog LEDs cost four cents a piece, which will show some of them are even, even less, but let's say, you know, your large quantity is four cents, Okay, $4, you know, that's still a bit because you have to add in the $2 driver, but you're still ahead by four bucks. And if you're making a lot of these, um, a lot of this product and you have a lot of LEDs, you can see how once you get to like about 64 LEDs-ish, it starts to turn into, you know, you might be better off getting a driver chip. Especially if you can get all of the LEDs driven by one chip, right? You get one chip, it's two bucks. Yes, that's your your setup cost, but then each individual LED is only two, three, four, five cents instead of 10 cents. And, and yeah, for something that only has five LEDs, I always go with dot stars and NeoPixels because they're so cheap and so easy. Um, but when I'm thinking about a keyboard design or something with a lot of LEDs on it, um, I'm gonna use a driver like this. So that said, uh, we need to find a low cost analog RGB SMD LED, which is what this great search is all about. Let's find these little friends here, RGB, right? And, and here's the thing. There are basically um, three kinds of RGB LEDs. You can have four pin common anode, four pin common cathode, or six pin where each LED is individual. These days, I don't see as many RGB um, we do stock, you know, RGB 5050 plain LEDs here, and you'll see that these do have six pins on them. 
because it's R, G, and B. There's three individual LEDs. However, I don't see these in the smaller sizes. Um, so just be aware, it tends to be a common anode, common cathode. This is kind of what I see more of these days. Um, in this case, because of the way this is designed, you know, common um, anode is more popular and this is showing a common anode configuration, but you could use it with common cathode as well. That said, we're probably gonna look for a common anode uh, design, which means that, um, let's see, I think we have a couple common anode. Yeah, we have, you know, common anode LEDs. Uh, you know, this is a gigantic one, of course, but you'll see there's one positive, there's four pads, one positive, one red minus, one green minus, one B minus. So you, usually NPN transistors are a little stronger than, you know, P channel or PNPN or PNP uh, type uh, transistors. And that's why common anode is a little bit better, a little bit better. Insignificantly really, but it is a little bit better. Um, so this is the driver chip, again, that we're using in case you're interested. Um, they are, they're gonna have some in stocks shortly. Uh, so let's look for um, RGB uh, LED. So we're gonna just search for RGB LED. Uh, and don't forget there's the addressable LEDs. These are the NeoPixels and dot stars and stuff. Good things, here's like our favorite, the Jewel. Um, but uh, we don't want that we want uh, discrete. We want individual LEDs, non-addressable, analog. Um, okay, so I told you about the configuration. You can get, uh, let's see, let's zoom in. We can get common anode, common cathode, independent or standard. What's standard? I don't know, but we're going to actually ignore that for now. Let's just uh, start with, we just want active and uh, let's go with normally stocking because right now there's a lot of stuff that's not in stock. So you know, a lot of times I'm like, I only want to get stuff in stock if I'm getting a replacement part or a one-off. But because stocks are of components are just so volatile right now, I'd rather see everything and then check what the lead times are. It could be reasonable. Usually LEDs are not. I don't think LEDs are strongly affected by um, the silicon shortage because they're not complicated transistor-based Silicon made by TSMC. They're they're you know made more locally. They're made by smaller fabs. Okay. Um, so next question is: Do we want surface mount bottom entry right angle through hole? Well, I definitely don't want through hole. Um, in this particular case, I don't want right angle or bottom entry. Although I might eventually look for a bottom entry one just because I want it to um, you know poke through the uh, PCB underneath the each switch. So I'm going to go with just surface mount. So already only have like, you know, 200 options available. Um, so the next thing is, is that like everything else is kind of, I don't really care. Again, common anode, common cathode, doesn't matter. Um, you know, cut tape or tape and reel. I mean, it's good. I'm going to eventually purchase it and tape and reel. Because I'm going to be using so many of these, I do want to see the prices at a very large quantity. So about 50,000 is what I'm going to put in for um, the prices. And then, um, so what I did for fun, which is, which is, you know, sometimes my trick is I, I sort downward by quantity. Um, so for example, this LED, it's a very small LED, but you can see it's got four pads. This is a, I believe a common anode. Um, and there's 2 million in stock, which is, which is pretty cool. This, um, happens to be a one by one sized, uh, one millimeter by one millimeter LED, which is a little bit small, I want something a tiny bit bigger. So I, I will show what the one millimeters are used for. So if we go to the overhead real fast. So this is a uh, ultra, I mean, it looks like, it looks like it's a texture, but it's actually, these are individual LEDs. These are uh, one millimeter by one millimeter, I think LEDs here. So they're used in LED panels. Um, also, sometimes I see them on dead boards as like micro indicators. Uh, they're super cute, but this is a little bit too small for me. I want something, a little bit bigger, a little bit brighter. So let's go um, back to the uh, computer. So for dimensions, you know, I think I'm going to go at least 1.4 squared. 8 by 8 is kind of big, but let's just do that. Okay, so we got rid of the ultra tiny ones. And um, 
so this one is, is kind of neat. This is actually a reverse mount one, which I thought was kind of interesting. But I actually, I think I'm going to start with, um, you know, this size, which you can see there's a couple options that are very similar in size. I think this is one point. Uh, this is three, sorry. This is 1.6 by 1.6, which is, you know, a little, you know, it's, 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 a bit bigger but it looks like there's a couple different standard sizes for this and in fact if you look at the uh hold on, let me go here if we look at the uh overhead so this grid this matrix grid these are this is that size and i can even tell by looking at it, it's the same package so this led is similar to um what was used on the eval board Let's see if i can oh this doesn't zoom in right Oh, wait. What if I zoom? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're zooming out. Okay. So, yeah, you can see these are these are a little rectangular. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, computer. So I ended up uh, deciding to go with this, and there's a couple things that I liked about this LED. Um, one, it's nice and big. looks like I can even hand solder it. The other one, obviously, is pick and place only. This one, I like how you can, uh, you, I could, I could debug, you know, solder this pretty easily with uh, a fine tip. Um, it has uh, common anode connectivity, and um, the LED millicandelas are really high. So 630 um, millicandela for each one is, oops, I zoomed too much. Uh, 630 millicandela each is, is nice and bright. It means that even when I'm PWMing, like, it'll look really good. Um, you can do global current control, so I can um, have a lot less current and still get a very uh, bright light. Also sounds like, it, you know, it says um, mixed white. I wonder if this is uh, balanced so that when all the LEDs are on, it kind of looks, uh, it kind of looks white. And it looks like these are binned as well. So this is a pretty nice LED, and again, it's like five cents uh, in quantity, so a good if I'm looking at making something with 60 LEDs, like a 60% keyboard, um, adding these up and then including the driver chip could end up being um, a really good option. Another nice thing about these um, LED drivers is you don't write the entire number of LEDs at once and also happens over I squared C or SPI. So you can use DMA and you can change individual LEDs, you don't have to write the whole thing out, which can speed up the system quite a bit because you're just you're just writing out like set LED to X, or, you know, or set this other LED to Y. You don't have to write out the entire LED strip like you do with NeoPixels and dot stars. So pretty cool. I like that there's a couple options in this size as well and there's 12,000 stocks. So I'm digging it. This is the B38 G3 RGB from Harvatech. There's a lot of LED makers, so it uh, looks like a jelly bean part, and I'm going to pick some of these up, and then you'll probably see these in a couple weeks when I design them into my keyboard controller. Very exciting. All right, that's a great search. Where in the world is